So this week's video is going to be a little bit different because I am traveling. So as soon as I got at the airport, I wanted to be so organized with my knitting that I cast it on some lovely blue cobalt socks. However, sadly, in the plane, I quickly realized that I was knitting on completely wrong needles and I had confused my US sizes with the millimeter sizes. Yikes. So this trip was my very first time abroad. I had never been overseas, so it was a nice little quick trip to see the world, <laughs> I guess you can say. I met up with my sister in Italy and we headed down to the Amalfi Coast and that's where we stayed in this cute little town. And the weather was super stunning. It was really warm. It was probably 30 degrees the entire time we were there. And which isn't that much hotter than it was here because right now it's 30 degrees in Vancouver as I'm recording this. <laughs> but Amalfi is known for their lemons. And honestly, I didn't know this. Their lemons are very different from what we have here. They're a lot sweeter and you could practically just bite right into it. So they turn it into this lovely little sorbet and they put it back inside the lemon and sell it like that. So every town you head over to, you can buy lemon sorbet. We were actually sitting here at one of the little lemon farms along the coast and there was this cute little cat that really eagerly wanted to eat our leftover sandwich. <laughs> Even tried to jump on the table. You can actually walk the Amalfi Coast from one town to the other, so here we were doing just that. And I don't know if it is because we are crazy, but we did it in the middle of the day, really hot. The cats, all along the way, there are cats laying on the side of the road trying to sleep in the shade. <laughs> Yet here we are, walking. <laughs> it was really hot. One of the funnest things about the Amalfi Coast is the fact that you can actually take a boat from city to city, town to town, and we tried to do that every single day. You do have to reserve the boats a little bit in advance because they do book up really, really quickly. But honestly, it is totally worth it. We were just here for four or five days, but honestly, it was a total blast. being in Italy, I had to try a bunch of their desserts. So I'm happy to say that I had my very first cannoli in Italy and it was so good. It was an orange cannoli. And then we had a bunch of different other desserts as well. I think my favorite might've been this croissant filled with orange marmalade or orange jam. It was so good. I still think about it. <laughs> I tried to do as much knitting as I could everywhere because I really desperately wanted to get this tank top done. I basically on this trip got most of my knitting done in the travels between Vancouver to Italy, Italy to London, London home. A little bit of an outfit check and then bye bye Italy. Our next stop on this quick little trip was London. London baby. As soon as we got to London, because I had missed out on the shops in Italy, the yarn shops, I knew that the first stop was gonna have to, of course, be a yarn shop. And that is just what we did. We went to Beautiful Knitters, which is this gorgeous, cute little shop. And honestly, look at all these skeins. They're so pretty. Oh, makes me wanna go back. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting too excited thinking about all these gorgeous yarns again. So since in Italy I had my very first cannoli, the only thing that seemed right to do in London was have my very first high tea experience. And honestly, this experience was a pure delight. The food was so good, but the tea, I think the last tea I had, the little flowery tea was the best thing ever. And if I can, I will definitely get that tea back home. <laughs> And then if you're in London, of course, you have to go do museums and very touristy things. So that is just what we did to end our three-day trip in Italy, in London. Woo! 
confusing the cities. I only went to two. <laughs> I currently am stuck in Calgary. I don't know if you are aware, but WestJet went on strike. So I got a hotel room. I'm very tired. And I have a flight this morning, hopefully to take me home. WestJet ended up completely canceling my booking. So I now booked with a completely different airline, which is very frustrating because I am stranded. And they were like, we can't rebook you for the following 48 hours after this. That was at 1 a.m. this morning. So I'm not staying here for two days. So I did book a separate flight with a separate airline. So that's all good. I'm going home. However, I did want to take the time to talk to you guys because I have time. <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out this mic. I didn't film in Italy as much as I would have wanted to or in London and vlog because I was, the trip was very short. I was very much in the moment, it just didn't really happen. I did, where did I put it? I did manage to get some knitting done. I did finish my tank top. So this is what it looks like right now. I'm, my plan was to go home and block it and sew in the straps because right now I'm just holding them with little, right now they're just being held with little clips because I, you can't bring sewing needles on a plane. What I wanted to take time, um, sorry. Sorry, I'm tired. I'm just like hyperventilating, I guess. What I did wanna say was on the plane on the way here, started a new project and I wanted to show you guys to show how far I got. I couldn't knit the majority of it because it was dark and people were sleeping around me and I didn't want to turn on my light because I didn't want to use my new yarn till I showed it to you guys. I did cast on with the leftover skein I had from the tank top because I brought two and it used up one and like a little smitch of this skein. I found this pattern on Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern. So essentially this is gonna be a drawstring bag. So this is just the top of the rim and then it folds over and then you can kind of pull the two together. But yeah, <laughs> what took really long and why I only got this far in an eight hour flight was essentially because you need to do a provisional cast on and then like put the stitches back on the needle, but because it was dark and because I couldn't, didn't have scissors to just cut pieces, like, I don't know, I kept getting it tangled and it just took really, really long. So sadly I was only able to knit two eye cords and just the little rim. But today, and my flight is like 45 minutes. That's the most frustrating part. It's that I'm stranded here. And my mom was like, you could drive, but it's a 10 hour drive. I can't drive. I'm not driving this tired, even if I could. But yeah, so we're gonna see how far I can get in 45 minutes on the flight or at the airport right now, because I'm gonna go back, make sure my flight is there, and I will never fly with WestJet again. No, never. That's it, that's done. But boy, am I tired. I don't know how this video is gonna to come to be, if this is gonna be in that video, if this is gonna be its own video, just me tired knitting at the airport. I'm sure some of you can relate, especially if you're stuck with WestJet like I am, or if you're ever stuck somewhere in a layover that's way too long. I feel you and just keep knitting. Yeah, let's go. Finally back home after all that chaos of flights, airports, trains, buses, I literally did it all. So it is now a full week later. I've had time to recuperate from the whole travel. I was supposed to have two days off before work, but I still had one day, which is better than none. 
So at the end of June, I went on a bit of a sporadic trip with my sister. She was in London for work for a week. And then a couple weeks ago, she was like, hey, would you want to come join me? And then we can go to Italy because she wanted to go to Italy again. She has already been. And I was like, yes, I need to travel for the last. I've had this urge to go traveling and things just always kept happening and it never actually happened. So I'm super happy. We went to Italy and then for four or five days and then we had like one day for travel to go to London and then we spent three days in London, a bit shorter of a time, but honestly it was really fun, really nice. Till the whole WestJet situation come back, the strike, the mechanics went on strike and basically for the last, so it's been many days of just chaos at the airport or with WestJet as a whole. That morning, I arrived at the airport, everything was fine. I was already at the airport waiting for my first connecting flight to Calgary. As I was flying, my flight got canceled, switched for that later in that evening. Then that got canceled, switched for the next morning. Then that got canceled, switched for the afternoon. Then that got canceled and then switched for 11 p.m. at night. And then that one got canceled and they were like, we can no longer rebook you for the next... What did I say, 42, 72, 48, 72 hours? I don't know. They couldn't rebook me um, because I think the law is if they can't rebook you within a certain time frame, they have to cancel fully and refund you or whatever. So that happened and that was at 2 a.m. No, I refreshed, that's true, I refreshed my email and then I see an email, crucial, thank you for flying with us, your trip is now ended. Like that's how they sent it. And I was like, are you serious, that's it? Just like, thank you for flying with us. We hope to see you soon, but your trip has now come to an end. <laughs> so, yeah, so thankfully I called my boyfriend and he helped me find a flight. Which, there was none to Vancouver because of the whole chaos. Um, there was nothing to Vancouver. So I had to fly to Abbotsford and then I found out that there was a bus from Abbotsford to Vancouver for I think it's like an hour bus so that's what I did I flew to Abbotsford to Vancouver because otherwise I would have had to get a flight for the day after to Vancouver because all the ones to Vancouver were booked because I was trying to find a flight at 2 a.m. during all this chaos so yeah but as you guys saw, the trip was beautiful by now. I'm pretty sure that the videos of the trip will have been before this. Honestly, it was really well needed because my work has been very hectic. So I'm glad to have had the trip when it was, even despite the ending chaos, the trip was still a lovely trip. So that was kind of like the whole trip, the getting there, coming back and all that. Um, but now we can talk about the very fun part, the knitting. So during this whole travel, I managed to knit up a tank top. I think I was at the body, kind of like at almost connecting the body. I had a couple more rounds in the round to knit up for this cute little camisole. So I know that it is black, but hopefully you guys can see it. Now this isn't washed or blocked. I still need to finish it. I managed to attach the straps, but after attaching them, I think I'm just going to make them a little bit longer yeah i've been debating about the whole strap situation i don't know how i feel about them so that's why i kind of haven't washed or blocked it i've kind of just been sitting on this one for a little while so this tank top is very similar to the petite knit one however i don't have that pattern i didn't buy it this is kind of knit up on my own this is a sport weight i don't know what yarn weight the petite knit pattern uses um, it's more just like inspired roughly by it and then at the same time it is very much more like the secret summer top sort of I don't know I kind of got inspired by both those patterns and tried to do my own thing here so that's what this is as I was knitting it up for the front I was like I think I'm just gonna stop here I think I'm gonna make this wider I think this will be this and sort of that's kind of how I worked on it on the trip uh, so there was quite a bit of unraveling and redoing so the back also does end up a little bit higher than the front it's a little bit wider uh, there's a couple things that I'm on the fence about so I think I might actually wash and block and see after making the straps just a little bit longer I think they're still a little bit too short it just pulls a little bit too high on the top one thing I find really funny about this yarn, and I've kind of noticed knitting it up in a stockinette and not in the headband form, because it is 70% cotton and 30% rayon, I think that the silk rayon is the little like shiny part on like wrapping around the yarn, yet when you knit it up in stockinette, hopefully you guys can see it, 
but you don't really see that shine to it. It kind of, I guess, gets twisted around in the knits and pearls. You don't see it, only the cotton comes through, which is really nice. I was actually worried that it would be shiny or sheer, and I didn't really want that. Yeah, these straps need to be longer. They're just... I also managed to cast on another knit, and this one I did manage to finish it this week. On the plain over, I think I managed to knit up about halfway through the bag. So this is a pattern by Pearl Soho, and I'll put the name right here. I forget what it's called, but it's just like your little drawstring bag. Now this one is just the simple bag. It's not the backpack. You do have the option to make it into a backpack, but I just wanted a cute little pouch. I still need to sew these two I cords together, so that's why there's little stitch markers. Honestly, I think it is very cute, and it is made up of the exact same yarn. The pattern originally states that you need to make the bag from the, uh, the little drawstring fold over flap. It says to knit 12 inches. Now I thought that that was gonna be too long for a very simple little pouch. So what I have here is seven inches. And I think that this just looks super cute. Honestly, this didn't even take up that much yarn. If you have a little mini skein of yarn and you wanna knit up a pattern I or have a little bag, I highly recommend this. So the pattern is a free pattern. I will link it down below. I just picked it up at the airport and was like, yes, this is what I wanna knit on. It is very simple. The hardest part was probably figuring out how to sew on the band itself with the drawstring because you need to fold it over and then have one drawstring. So one of the string, it kind of goes like this, wraps around and here's the other end and then the other one does the opposite. So it starts here and then you tie it together at the other end. So sewing that, like knitting the front and the back together while having the string wrapped around inside was a little bit tricky and inconvenient. But other than that, that was probably the hardest part. The rest is just regular stockinette. And I did a basic toe bind off. What is that mattress stitch at the bottom edge? That's it. The pattern originally asks you to cast on 126 stitches. I think I ended up doing 118. Just I just decided that number because I was knitting on 3.5 millimeters, which is US 4, and this is a sport weight yarn. The pattern is for a fingering yarn, right? Or a light fingering or a fingering weight yarn. So just to estimate, I just went up a needle size and then was just like, let's just remove this amount of stitches. There was no real process behind it. I figured it being a bag doesn't really matter. But honestly, if you ever have little gifts to give or if you wanna make a bigger one, you could and use it as a project bag, that would be really cute. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe make it a sock project bag so I can put my little socks inside and keep them nice and cozy. So sadly, those were the only two things that I knit on this trip because <laughs> I first off forgot that I had my Turkish spindle with me. It was in my suitcase the entire time and I just completely forgot about it. So we got to London and then I was like, well, it's kind of too late now to start spinning and just like build it. Um, it was easier to just keep flat packed away. And then the socks, as you guys saw in the intro, I accidentally brought, I mixed up my US size and the millimeter size of the needles for the pattern. So I brought needles that were like way too big, which is a bummer in itself. Oops. So I didn't end up knitting or casting on those socks. I don't know why I really hate my hair today. But as for acquisitions in Italy, I did manage to purchase some knitting related things. So the first one that I wanna show you guys, it's this cute little bag. So this is a bag that I got in Pozzitano from CB. They sell many different size bags and project bags and like backpacks and travel bags, all in like this cute little quilted fabric. And then they also sell dresses. Now I went there originally wanting a dress, but sadly they were one size fits all and they my sister ended up buying a dress it looks beautiful and stunning but i couldn't find one that fit properly especially here but i did manage to get a bag so this is going to be a little project bag that i already have stuff in here it comes with like four pockets on the inside and the lining on the inside is the same material but it has four little pockets and I also got a little pencil case from them that I'm gonna use for my knitting 
essentials, maybe like some little stitch markers or needles or sewing, stuff like that. So this is a bunch of different little fabrics put together and sewn up. And I thought that these were super cute. And then, oh, I have my retainer. <laughs> I accidentally forgot my retainer at home during the trip. So I had to buy a replacement, which these things are very expensive over there. I don't know. Um, I grind my teeth at night when I sleep because I'm a very stressed out person. So I have to sleep with a mouth guard. And then I also got another little bag from Italy. So this is a really cute leather purse. It has a little zipper on the back. I just loved how many pockets there were in here. So I have my wallet in there right now. Mm, oh my God, it smells so good. So I'm really happy to actually get a little leather purse from Italy. And so London, I did manage to go to an actual yarn shop. I ended up going to Beautiful Knitters. I had to get, of course, a little tote bag to celebrate the fact that I was in London shopping for yarn. I originally planned to buy a lot more yarn. I also wanted to buy only local stuff. The yarn shop had a lot of Noro, had a lot of Knitting for Olive, had a lot of uh, Sadness Garn. Isager, but those are all yarns that I, they're not like native to Canada, but they're yarns that I can actually get in yarn shops here or easily get online. So I wanted to get some yarn that I hadn't really heard of or that was local to London. So the first one that I got is this beautiful, stunning green. I am absolutely obsessed with this one. It is 100% British wool made in Yorkshire, UK. It is by Laxton's Yorkshire Sheep Soft DK. A spun in Laxton from fleece to finish yards in less than 50 miles. So I got this one because I thought it was super fun. It's 100% local. The dyeing, the spinning, and the sheep are all local to the UK. So I thought that that was really fun. I ended up getting four of these, <laughs> but I just loved this green. I thought it was such a fun, a fun, beautiful green and it's DK weight. So these skeins run 225 meters, the 100 gram hank. So I'll just put the yarn weight there. But yeah, I got four of these, unsure of what to cast on with it. I think I might try to work this up in a color work with maybe like a cream, a white, that would be beautiful. Or maybe just make a small little vest jumper with this. I think it would be great. Then the second thing I got was, which I'm really excited for, I lost one of the tags, but it is, oh, there's an accent, but it is Rosario's 4 Principal Real Eco-Friendly Collection, 100% Natural Fibers. It is 50% linen, 50% cotton, and 14% natural silk. So I got this beautiful yellow. I think that this is such a fun yellow and I love the yarn. It's such a cool concept. The way that it's like on the inside, it's a, it looks like a four plied yarn with kind of some linen wrapped around it. So I thought that that was really fun and unique and I can't wait to see what this actually knits up into. Now this one runs you, does it say the meterage? So it's 120 meters the skein. So basically I have 240 meters. So I really don't have a lot of this one, but I thought that it would be really fun. Something cute, small to be knitted up with this would be really, really fun because it does feel, it feels, it has a really interesting texture. The yarn inside makes it really squishy, but the linen on the outside, I don't know if you've ever knit with linen or if you are someone who enjoys lin knitting with linen, it's like a very papery, not super soft fiber to have directly on your skin, but it's not like wool itchy. It's just like a little bit more, yeah, the best way I can describe it is like a paper feeling. I wasn't planning on getting any books or anything. I was planning on getting more yarn, but then I was just blown away when I saw that they had the Len magazine. If you guys watched my video of pattern recommendations from the fall, I talked about this book and how I wanted it and I couldn't find it here. I was so happy to find this one in the store. So this is the one from Winter. The reason why I absolutely wanted this book is because of one pattern in particular. It is this one. So this is Nightfall by Maxim C which I didn't know. This is my first Lynn magazine. 
if you guys have them before you probably know i thought that like all these pictures because it is the same girl in all the pictures for the patterns i thought it was all her designs i thought it was like they choose a designer per couple of months and they just highlight that one designer but no every pattern is made by these designers so each pattern is a different designer from around the world which is really really fun and funny enough i was actually surprised when i read this little blurb about maxim because he is a graphic designer from montreal i'm from montreal <laughs> and he does illustration for children's book for 15 years um, but he is co-owner of the knitting brand Les Garçons. So I don't know, I just thought that that was really cool. So that made me want to knit the sweater up even more. I mean, isn't it? I mean, look how beautiful this is. It's just stunning. Other knits in this book that have really caught my attention are Helga Isager's Royan Royanji? Royan Royani or Royanji? It is a stunning, beautiful ribbed skirt. Honestly, this, any length. I feel like you can make this even shorter or longer. Any length would look beautiful. But I just love the kind of pleated detailing at the front. It's just so feminine and stunning. And I really, really want to knit the skirt. Two more patterns in the book that I would love to highlight is Paulina Leisty's Softies, which is this beautiful, stunning sweater. Now this is like a really chunky collared pullover sweater. I just love the collar on this one. I think it is such a fun folded collar. And then of course the stripes. I'm someone who is very into stripes. I like stripes. Some people are into polka dots. I'm a stripe girl. Finally, the last one that I want to highlight in this book because there are quite a few patterns, but it is Alexandra's Atepaeva's Crisp Morning. Whoops, that's the, <laughs> that's the artist's blurb. But it is this beautiful vest. I really want to knit this one. And I was thinking, what if I knit this little vest in the green? Hopefully you can see that. But it has some like pearled detailing across it. The fact that it's like really wide and square kind of gives me a little bit of cowboy vibes. But like a nice cowboy, not like... I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really like this one. Then there are socks, hats, and other knitted uh, items, sweaters, cardigans, other knitted items in this book. So I'm really happy to have been able to pick this up. Which makes me think another book that I haven't shown you guys, but I actually did pick up before my trip is actually the Sun Niskarn book. So this is their Tima 72 Norwegian icons. I went to a yarn shop with my friend. She had a bunch of credits to like spend up and I didn't want to buy yarn, but I didn't want to leave empty handed. And I stumbled upon this beauty. So this is my first book from Sonnesgarn. My boyfriend was also there with us. And I was looking at this and this is just knits for men and women so they have the men version and the woman's option and then I thought like as an excuse to then get the book I was like mm -hmm. what if I make you a sweater and I made one for me too so that I could buy this book and that'll give me a reason to buy the book <laughs> and he was like yeah sure I'd love a sweater and I was like oh, okay let me just knit mine first and then I'll knit you one we'll see <laughs> one sweater that he really liked because I showed it to him and I was like, tell me which one you want and I might make it for myself too. So the first half of this book is just the photos. So this is the sweater that he really liked. And I think even in these colors, I might do that or maybe make the dots not white, make them like a lighter blue or something a little less poppy. Um, so there's that one that is also available for women's. So this is what it looks like white with blue little squares. Um, these are all color work sweaters. So here's the women and the men's on the same page. I keep looking to make sure I'm showing you guys properly. I absolutely love this one, but I don't prefer it in the men's version. I prefer the women's version for this one. So, sorry, the first one that I showed you is the Islander Herreg Guess Genser. Islander Herregenser? 
that's the squared one, the first one that I showed you. And then the one that I just showed you, the color work one. <laughs> Can you, why is she in the crack? I wish books, when they take pictures and print pictures, didn't put it like in the crack. It doesn't really show well. I wish that they just like moved her over. That one is the Anna Genser. Anna Genser? Anna Genser? Anna Genser? Oh, this one is also beautiful. The Slalom Herregenser. Slalom Herregenser for men. I don't think they have this one for women in this book, but it is beautiful. The most beautiful of all, which I think for both men and women, is, where are you? I just saw you. It's the one on the cover. It's this one. This is the Boverton Dame Kofte. So one interesting fact about this book is that the first half is just pictures of the knits. The second half is just the instructions, but in the middle of the second half, you have the translations in English and the translations in Danish, or this is Danish, right? Norwegian? Sun is is Danish, I think. But anyways, so you have the translations in English and then you have the normal original translations. Um, now, I did meet up with a knitting friend who has knit patterns from Sandus Garn, and I didn't know this. Apparently, their translation in English isn't the best. I will try and see, and I will report back to you once I cast one of these on, how I end up finding this translation or these patterns, like my level, how easy they are to knit up. And then on the back, they show you guys all the patterns that they have in the book. So this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 patterns for $15. So it's a little bit more than a dollar a pattern, basically. But then, does this one have that too? Please tell me you do. 9, 10, 11. So I'm assuming that this book doesn't have repeating artists in it. So by the names here, it would have about 11 patterns plus three like cooking recipes and then a little artist blurb with additional like uh, hobby information. I think there is some in the center. There's like a blurb about an embroidery artist who does these cute little embroideries. This one was 22 pounds, which in Canadian is, I'm just gonna flip the conversion. The Len Design books here are more expensive than the Sonnes Garn, but basically like, but yeah, so I think I'm going to end it because I don't really know where to go from here. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This wasn't my typical video. This was, I guess, more just for me and my travel so I can look back on it and just remember this trip I had with my sister. It was a lot of fun. Hope you guys are having a lovely, beautiful weekend and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.